My name is Pastor Brian Kipchumba. I'm the resident pastor at the Eldore Chapel. Um, the Eldore Chapel is the best place to be every Sunday because, um, first of all, it's a place of worship. And uh, secondly, we have amazing people who love the Lord and love people. And uh, we, we love to study the Word. We love to uh, sing worship. We love to... Uh, fellowship together and share and encourage one another. Every Sunday is an exciting time for us. Um, since we are Bible-based, we start off with Bible study from 8.30 to 10 a.m. And then uh, after that, uh, our other value is uh, being prayer-oriented. Uh, we do prayers between 10 uh, to 10.30. And then uh, we have worship through singing for another 30 minutes. And then uh, uh, we go to the main uh, portion of the day, that is uh, the message from the Word of God. Corinthians 11 verse 17 and I'll read all the way to verse 34. We are talking about the Lord's Supper and it is called Supper because it was a real meal. It's not uh, what we do nowadays. We just get a, a little piece of bread. It was a real meal. And when you read in Acts chapter 2 uh, from verse 42 you will see that the, the church used to share meals. One has few. And then maybe finish with the, the tradition of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper or Holy Communion is one among many parts of worship. One has a few. The Lord's Supper, some of us think that it is something uh, that is done spe specially or specifically. But it is part of worship. One has a few. It is one among many parts of worship. Um, Paul talks about... Um, about this in his letter to the Corinthians. Paul had received reports of improper of servants of uh, the long time church tradition. He had received reports of improper of servants of this long time tradition, uh, church tradition. The Corinthians had turned it to an object of division rather than unity. Because uh, when Christ instituted or uh, started this tradition of of uh, Christians coming together to celebrate the Lord's table. It was to unify them, one as few, to unify them in the mind, to unify them in the spirit, one as few. So Paul seeks to correct this problem by insisting that uh, any aspect of worship should contain these very important uh, aspects. He has, he has written about different things in First Corinthians. He has written about uh, how to do worship, how to do prayers, how uh, to use gifts. So in this part, and every time he insists on these three things that we do in church. One has a few. Everything we do in church should have these three aspects. Number one, it should honor God. One has a few. It should honor God. Whatever we say, whatever we sing, whatever we pray, Whatever we do in church, one has a few. It should have these three aspects. One, honor God. Number two, 
It should ensure equal and proper treatment of all church members. All members in the church should be treated equal. And you will see why Paul is insisting on, on this, especially in regards to uh, the Lord's Supper. Number three, the aspect number three in everything that we do to worship God, we should ensure a good testimony of the church to outsiders. One as you feel. These are the things Paul is, is insisting on. Everything we do, including the Lord's Supper, should ensure a good testimony of the church to who? To outsiders. The Corinthians gave neither due regard to the honor of Christ nor edified one another in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. And that we see in verse 17 to 20. But in giving this instruction, maybe she was civil. I do not praise you because you would come together not for the better but for the worse. For there must also be factions. Um, verse 18. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist among you. So some have lost uh, the corporate aspect and they uh, come to focus mainly on themselves. That is in verse 21. So for in your week eating, verse 21, each one takes his own supper first, and one is hungry and another is drunk. Contrary to today, where we celebrate the Lord's Supper with a small piece of bread and a tiny cup, believers in the early church celebrated with big banquets. So in verse 22, Paul is uh, 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 exclaiming, what? Do you not have houses in your house to eat and drink? Or do you despise the, the church of God and, and, and shame those who have nothing? If the president comes here and we have some food, <laughs> who will be the first to eat? Who will, who will be the first to eat? And yet the president may be even carrying food in his vehicle. And he can afford, he can go to Bomain. So this is, this is what was happening. Wale abao ni matajiri, diyo walikuwa wanapewa first priority. Na wale ni maskini hoehehae, walikuwa wanakosa chakula. That is what Paul anawauliza. Ama muna chukia wale awana kitu? Muna onea wale awana kitu? What shall I say to you? Should I praise you? Ni wasiku? Apana, hii kitu wambao munafanya si mzuri. In their meals, the Corinthians favored the privileged and uh, rich, leaving nothing to the poor. This was a common practice. However, Christianity demands everyone be treated equal. Verse 23 to 26. Paul reminds the Corinthians that the central focus of the Lord's Supper is the remi uh, remembrance and proclamation of Christ's saving work. One as few. Because Paul says in verse 23 to 26, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, uh, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. Paul was disappointed that the Corinthians had not followed his teachings. And uh, about the Lord's Supper, even after telling them that they on, he only taught them what he received from Christ. They were disobeying even Christ himself. So what are you doing in the church? If you cannot, you cannot obey the, 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 the Lord, if you cannot obey Christ, what business do you have in the church? If you cannot follow the instructions of Christ, the way Christ wants things to be done in his church, in his congregation, what business do you have? So Paul is really disappointed. Paul then moves to describe how to observe the Lord's Supper based on Christ's own example. This is how you should do it. Do it as Christ did. What did Christ, how did Christ do it? When he had given thanks, um, he broke it, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is, read with me, this is my body, which is for you. Do this for what? In remembrance of me. And then in the same way, he took what? What did he take next? The cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Jesus took bread, which is also which also can be translated as a loaf, not just a piece of bread. One has a few. He took bread, a whole loaf, 
And you know the bread uh, during that time when Jesus uh, was in, in the Jewish culture, the bread is not like the bread that we have today, the, the, the loaf of bread, of, of bread. It's like a chapati, it was like a chapati, it was round shaped. So that was the loaf of bread. Gave thanks, broke it. This was a common practice. Uh, when, when, when visitors come to your place, the host is the one to break the bread. One as a few. That was the tradition, the Jewish tradition. Jesus then said, this is, this is what? Are you, are you with me? This is what? This is my body. So the bread is a symbol of Christ's body that was offered for the forgiveness of our sins. One as a few. Because when Jesus took the bread, he said, this is my body. So this is a symbol of Christ's body that was offered for the forgiveness of our what? Our sins. Which is for you. And th those words are very important. Those words are very important. Don't, don't undermine them. Which is for you. This means that Christ died on behalf of others. One as a few. He didn't, he didn't die for, for himself. He didn't die to be praised. He didn't die to be remembered in history. He died on behalf of others. When I see you, who do you think are others? Who do you think are others? Wewe, na mimi, na kila mtu mwingine ambaye unamjua. That is why the significance of the Lord's Supper is very important. Because we remember the greatest thing that Christ did for us. There is something called atonement. The atoning power of Christ's death is offered to all. It is available to anyone who believes in Christ. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That who? Whoever does what? Should not perish. But have everlasting life. This gift that Christ gave when he died is, available, is, is, is offered to all. In a peano kwa wote. Lakini watakao pata manufaa yake ni nani? Those who believe. If you have not believed, you, are not, you have not yet accessed the benefits of the death of Christ. So you need to do what? To take that bold step. So do this in remembrance of me. That's what Christ says. The Lord's Supper is for remembrance of the death and resurrection of Christ. When Jesus celebrated this supper with his disciples, he was about to be betrayed, to be arrested and killed. And that is why we remember his death and resurrection in the Lord's Supper. Because the last supper that he took with his disciples, he was about to be taken to the cross. One as a few. Although the supper was during the uh, Passover, Christ was now shifting the significance from the Exodus to himself as the um, ultimate deliverer. One as a few. You remember when... Uh, Jesus uh, did the Lord's Supper with his disciples, it was during the Passover night. One has a few. And you remember Passover night was a commemoration of when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. And uh, so now Christ is changing things. In the Lord's Supper, he's changing things. You, you are no longer to focus on the Exodus from Egypt. You are to focus now on the ultimate deliverer. One has a few. The one who will deliver you not only from uh, um, a human um, bondage, but also spiritual bondage. One as a few. So that is another significance of the Lord's Supper that Paul is talking about. So the focus in the Lord's Supper is not anything else. It's who? Christ. Verse 25. Um, in the same way, he took the cup also uh, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as uh, well as drink it in remembrance. So in the same way, one as a few. The, the way he took the, he, he, he treated the bread and, and, and so on. In the same way, means the same procedure as in the bread was followed. Again, in remembrance of who? Christ. It underscores Christ as the central focus of the Lord's Supper. The new covenant in my blood. The new covenant. Christ's death paid the debt of sin. One as a few. When you read in uh, Exodus 24, verse 6 to 8, you will see the significance of blood in making covenants in the Old Testament. There was great significance. In the Old Testament, uh, there was great significance of blood whenever there was a covenant making. 
That is why Christ applies it here. That my blood now. It's no longer the blood, the blood of what? It's no longer in the Old Testament. What, what blood was used? Was it human blood? Lambs, cows, and so on and so forth. For sin offering, for whatever. You, in, in Exodus, you will actually see the blood being sprinkled to cleanse. One has a few. So Christ is saying, I have, it is no longer the blood of animals. It is now my blood, which will forgive once and for all. One has a few. You can also read Zechariah 9 verse 11 uh, to see that, the new covenant uh, blood. The cup of the Lord's Supper symbolizes the centrality of Christ's blood as covenant uh, sacrificial blood. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. So the Lord's Supper is a testimony. It is also a te testimony. Because proclamation, you are, you are telling it to others. One has a few. It is a testimony to the unsaved that Christ is the only way to salvation. When we do that out there, we preach the gospel. One has a few. Because we are remembering the very event and the very act that brought salvation to the world. One has a few. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Paul's focus here is the Corinthian behavior in, in, in coming to the holy table. The misdemeanor, the, the act of causing division. That is the unworthy manner. Suffer in a way that failed to exhibit the unity of the, the, the church in Christ. And today... I have seen many times when we are taking the Lord's Supper, I have told you that this is not only just a meal to remember the dead and the same, but it, it's, it's supposed to foster the unity. I have seen in our church there are people who abstain from the Lord's Supper. And that will affect the unity of the church. Because in that holy table, we, we are we are aiming at boosting and, 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 you know, encouraging our unity. When we take the meal together, when we share the meal together, even, at your, even in your celebration, uh, there is an African uh, proverb that says, when we come together to eat, it's not that we don't have food in our homes or we cannot see the moon from where we are. We come for that fellowship. When I say So, when you abstain, you abstain this month, you abstain next month. What are you telling us about your membership in the church? It's like uh, 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 the, the, the others who are partaking, they don't know what they are doing. But this unworthy manner is not about confession. Now I understand. It is about what the Corinthians were doing. One has a few. The unworthy manner is the way they were treating the Lord's Supper with contempt, causing division. So I would urge us, we are supposed to be confessing our sins all the time. One as a few. And when we come to church, we are not coming as perfect people. No one is perfect. Are you saying those who take the Lord's Supper are more perfect than those who abstain? You see the, the kind of divisions we are causing? The kinds of thinking that we are raising, the speculation. So I would encourage us, if you are saved, one has a few. In fact, other churches teach that if you are not baptized, you should not partake. Where in the Bible is that written? If you are saved, one has a few. And if you are saved, you should be confessing your sins hourly, secondly. <laughs> So when we come and we have the Lord's Supper, all of us should partake, one has a few, to foster the unity. But Paul in verse 33 talks of waiting for one another. That is the most important thing here. Waiting for who? For one another. Because what was happening in, in the Corinthian church, kila mtu anachukua chakula, now it is meant to foster unity, one has a few. Kila mtu anachukua chakula, anaanza kula. Wengine wanakuja na manja, wanaanza kula kabla ya wengine. So this is what Paul insists. You should wait for one another. So the Lord's Supper is for remembering and proclaiming Christ. Anything contrary to that is considered sin against the body and blood of the Lord. So uh, verse 28 to 29.
To avoid the dishonoring Christ during the Lord's Supper, one should scrutinize their motives and actions. One has a few. One has a few. Make sure that as you come to the Lord's Supper, your focus is on who? On Christ, not on yourself. You see, this self-examination is to take place before eating and drinking. Look at yourself. Why are you doing it? Are you doing it because people are doing it or you really understand? And today I've explained to you. Paul was offering instruction for a specific problem. And the problem was that there was improper of servants. People were eating before others or others were more privileged than others. That was the problem that was being solved here. It was not the problem of your moral standing. In any case, nobody is, is sinless. In any case, nobody can claim to be holy. The Lord's Supper should be a time of celebration in which Christians should focus on Christ's honor, the church's unity, and the proclamation of the gospel. One has a few. Those are the three main points of, of, of uh, the Lord's Supper. Those are the three main uh, reasons of the Lord's Supper. Christ, to honor Christ, to boost the church unity, and to proclaim the gospel. One has a few. Yeah.